Is there anybody in here that's ever been mad at yourself for being too nice? Never really realizing that what I hate about myself is what God loves. It hurts to keep on caring, even when you're not treated fairly, but there's something down inside of you that cannot render evil for evil. It hurts to say I'm sorry when you know you wasn't wrong. It hurts to hold your peace when you know you're right about it. But there's somebody watching me right now that knows what it is to argue with yourself all night long and say what you ain't going to do and get up in the morning. You can't give away what you don't have. Now, it sounds ridiculous, but it's more than what meets the ear as you hear this. You can't give away what you don't have. People who are not good at giving away love can't give away love because they don't have it to give away. If I want to give you a dozen oranges, I can't give you those dozen oranges unless I go out and pick up 12 oranges someplace. Otherwise, all it is is just empty rhetoric. And the same thing is true of virtually everything in your life. You can't give away love for others if you don't have love in here to give away. If what you have in here is contempt, if what you have in here is anger, if what you have in here is fear, then these are the things you're going to be giving away in your life. Don't allow your emotions to control you. If you don't discipline and contain your emotions, they will use you. Your mind goes on automatic. Weeds don't have to have any encouragement to grow. You don't have to water them. They don't have to get sunshine. They don't have to have fertile ground. They will grow through the cracks of a sidewalk. But if you want to grow orchids or roses, or any kind of exotic flowers, there are special processes and procedures you must go through. You don't have to force yourself or motivate yourself to think negatively, to be depressed, to hate somebody, to want revenge, to want to get back at somebody, to beat yourself up over the head, to feel loaded with guilt. You don't have to make any effort to do that. You've got to be willing to harness your will. Your mind is on automatic. It will do that by itself. You've got to find ways to increase your sense of self-appreciation because if you don't, you're bombarded with negative stuff every day that beats you down and you will find yourself unconsciously engaged in self-destructive behavior. If you don't program yourself, life will program you. You've got to get grounded. You've got to train your mind to serve you. Just make up your mind. This is not going to control you. You have got to make a declaration that this is what you stand for. You're standing up for your dreams. You're standing up for peace of mind. You're standing up for health. You want it. And you're going to go all out to have it. It's not going to be easy when you want to change. It's not easy. If it were in fact easy, everybody would do it. But if you're serious, you'll go all out and say, in spite of this, I'm in control here. I'm going to turn this situation around. I'm not going to sit back and, and moan and cry over what happened and what went wrong and who did what. I'm going to do something about this situation. Many years ago, I read a book by Terry Cole Whitaker. It was a classic. What you think of me is none of my business. Think of the amount of time that is wasted on negative energy, wondering what other people think of you. What they think of you really doesn't make any difference. It's what you think of you that makes a difference. So as you go through the day, don't worry about what other people think of you. Just say, I'm all right. I'm God's highest form of creation. So what people tell you doesn't matter at all. It's what you stack. It's what you assemble. It's what you create. It's the habit of what you put in your head. And today I don't blame you because we got a whole culture that's always blaming somebody else for something in their life. It's truly a scientific fact that when you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. And now you take this tiny little subatomic particle and you take it and you put it in a particle accelerator and you rev up the, uh, the speed of these things and collide them at 250,000 miles per hour. Shh. 
you collide them, you open up the particle accelerator looking for your source, and guess what's in there? Nothing. No thing. That the dot that began you originated from a field of energy that has no boundaries, no beginnings, no ends. It's infinite. It's an infinite potential. And the question that I have for you is, if you can get this, that you didn't begin with that particle because particles themselves do not create more particles. St. Paul put it this way in the New Testament, that which is seen hath not come from that which doth appear. They talked a little strange in those days, right? What that means is that everything that we see in the material world doesn't originate in the material world. It's the spirit that gives life. The flesh counts for nothing. If the shape of your eye can be in an energy field that has no boundaries, no form, no materialness to it, why not the shape of your life? You have got to change the way you think. It is the whole determining factor of where you go in life. We are all where we are today because we thought ourselves to this position. If you don't like the position, think yourself out of it. Your brain is divided into two halves, positive and negative, good and evil. It don't function on nothing else. Ain't no neutral ground in your brain. It's either positive and good or negative and evil. Each half of your brain has millions of factory workers on each side. You got a million factory workers on the positive side. You got a million factory workers on the negative side. At the forefront of each one of those factories in your brain is a foreman. You got foreman positive and you got foreman negative. You are in charge. You're the boss of the factory. Guess what? We are how we think. So now, since your brain is in two halves, let me show you how this works. You wake up in the morning and you say, man, I don't feel myself today. I got up on the wrong side of the bed. I'm not a morning person. Forming negative. Her hears that. He steps to the front. He said, what did you say? You said, I said, I woke up on the wrong side of the bed today. I'm not myself. I'm not a morning person. He says, you got it right away. He said, hey, the boss just woke up and said he's not a morning person. He's having a bad day today and he ain't feeling himself. Let's get to work. The million factory workers start producing thoughts to justify what you just said. So now guess what? Man, I hate my alarm clock went off this morning. I got to get out here in this traffic. I gonna drive down here to there. I don't even like these people on my job. I can't stand this car I'm finna get in this morning. Sure wish I had a new car, but I'm driving this ragged ass car. And on and on and on. And your day starts tumbling into what you ordered at the top of the day. You can wake up in the morning and you say, you know what? Today is gonna be a great day today. I expect something really good to happen for me today. He said, what did you say? You said, I said, I'm having a great day today. I expect something good to happen today. Forming positive turns around and goes, all right, let me have your attention. Steve's having a great day today. He's expecting some wonderful things to happen. And man, let's get it going. And they start manufacturing thoughts. Same brain. Man, I can't wait to go to work today. It may not be the job I want, but at least I got a job. I'm so sure grateful I got a car to drive to work today. Hey man, at least I got a check coming in. I appreciate the fact that I don't have a car, but at least I can walk to the train. Man, this is gonna be great today. That's how your mind works 24 seven. It never turns off. Change your attitude, you change your altitude. It all depends on how you look at it. Our lives are mostly affected by the way we think things are. Not the way they are. The way we think they are affects us most. And Shok taught me that the mind is like a factory, a mental factory. And whatever you think about all day long pours ingredients into this mental factory. And that's what builds the economic, social, 
financial fabric of your life. As you think, so you become. What stops people from becoming successful is you look at your end goal and you see how far you are from it and then a year later you realize you're still not there and you get frustrated. That's not how you measure success. Success is not how far you've gotten. Success is how far you've gotten from where you started. And you have to take inventory of your life, man. You gotta, as a young person, you gotta go, okay, well, okay, I'm 19 and I got my first speaking role. Average person don't get the first speaking role at 19, man. So you gotta be okay with that. And I'm gonna drop this piece of jewel on you, man, that success is a process. It's an arduous pro, I'm still in the process. I gotta keep, I gotta mentor boys, especially for young people, man, because I've been young and I wanted it so bad and I had nothing, had nothing, man. So you gotta understand this thing called success is a process. Set your goals, but understand it take a long time to make a lot of money. You hear me, man? It take a long time to make a lot of money. Quit looking at Instagram. Instagram is people's highlight reel. That ain't really how they look. They got one Birkin bag. That ain't a real one. And they got it on Instagram and they're showing you the clasp open and all that. And they got a filter on it and they look perfect. They don't have a bump. That ain't life, man. Instagram's a highlight reel. That's their best picture they posted that day. You know how many shots they took to get that picture? Don't get caught up in none of that. Get your grind on, hustle. Get your head down and hustle. Hustle. Listen, man, the, the dream is absolutely free. The hustle and grind is so separate. It's two different things. You know, dreaming is one thing. Goals is putting work clothes on your dreams. You gotta set goals. When you set goals, you take your dreams and you don't put work clothes on. You gotta hustle, man. You got to talk to God every day. If you ain't talking to God, you're making this thing way harder than it's got to be. You got to include God in the mix or you're going to be struggling. Listen to me, I struggle. God, you don't put God in this thing, you're going to be wandering around for a long time. When you sat down for 30 minutes with students and only discussed their dreams, here's what happens. Once a child informs you of their dreams, you have the key to unlock his ability to learn. Because if a guy says, I want to fly an airplane, well then guess what? You got to get good at science. You got to get good at math. And now school becomes incredibly important to fulfill the dream. See, but if you never ask a child what he dreams and you're always telling him, you got to go to school, do your work, do your work. No, nah, man, you got to find out what makes him tick. So finding out what makes, what a person dreams about I don't know if you really noticed this or not. Education, education is never mentioned in the Bible. But if you dream of being a dentist, then guess what? You got to get good at reading. You got to get, get good at science. So now you can get them to do better in school because you got a reason to be good in school. But if you never give a child a reason to be good in school, that's the problem we have in the school system. That's my advice. They could have saved a lot of pain with me. Because I don't give a history. I don't. I'm not really good at math. I'm good at addition, subtraction, and multiplication. I know how many days I come to work. I know how much I make each day, and I multiply that, and I know how much you owe me. That's all the I need to know. The whole time, my whole ambition was to be on TV and to tell jokes. So why you feed me this physics? It could have saved me some trouble. Stuttering is not a physical ailment. It's purely mental. And it's only because it starts with the nervousness and then after that it's anticipation. When you stutter and people know you stutter, when they talk to you, they talk to you like this. So how are you today? And you see that and it locks you up because you know they waiting on you to start this, I'm, de de I'm de de doing fine. And, and it locks you up. The way you, uh, is the person here that stutters? You, here's the deal, man. You, first of all, you start, okay, let me ask you a question. When you read, do you stutter? No, I know you don't. You, when you read, you don't stutter. When you talk to yourself, do you stutter? No. It's only when you talk 
externally to other people. That's the whole key. It starts because you've built up an anxiety and a nervousness. So the way you cover stuttering is you stop eye contact with people. You cannot look at people. You have to talk within yourself. So I have little boys that come to my mentoring camp that stutter. I cure every last one of them little boys in my mentoring camp. I'd never let a little boy walk away from my camp and still stutter. And I mean with really bad stutters. The last camp I had, the little boy, the mother came to me and said, if you could just start helping him from study. I said, just give me a boy. I got him on a Tuesday. Saturday, he gave the commencement speech at the graduate. Whenever somebody talks to you, remove the tension, take the eye contact away. Go within yourself, say it to yourself twice, and then before you look up, answer the question, then look up. That's the drill I want you to do. I want you to do it in the mirror, I want you to do it with a close friend of yours, and that's all I want you to do. After a while, you'll only have to say it to yourself once. Then you look up. After a while, you'll be able to look at them, say it to yourself internally, then say it. That's it, man. I'm gonna give you the second drill. This is how you do it. This is it. This is how you cure stuff. There's nothing else. Staying away from the ST sounds, PR sounds, all that. Yeah, I don't know. It's just you. It's going within yourself. I saw an interesting dude that I saw on the camera dancing. Yeah, see, you, you got an extroverted side. You just got to let it out. The next thing you do, tell yourself, I no longer stutter. Because it's mental. You got to say this to yourself all the time. And act like you're reading all your thoughts. Because you don't stutter when you read, and you don't stutter when you talk to yourself. So you got to get in that mirror and talk to yourself constantly. I'm, I'm going to show you how to do it. Man. Tell jokes just in Cleveland and get famous. So I had to go away to get it done. But I, I, I think I understand you can, you can love your family and love your gift. And you shouldn't have to pick between the two. Because guilt is the most useless emotion in the world. Guilt serves the purpose of no one except the person who's trying to apply it for manipulative purposes. Every time I've ever been guilty is because somebody, oh, you just done forgot us. Oh, so now you think you all that. No, I don't think. No, see what happened is you think that I'm all this and you think I now think I'm this when I'm really the same dude. One thing I learned about money, money doesn't change people. 